Okay, here we go. So this is a Labs project, and that means that it's not a product today, and please don't uh, do any purchasing decision based on what we're going to show you. So as I said, my name is Lucas, Julia, we have Twitter handles as well, so please tweet us, let us know how you liked what you've seen. We are at Oracle Labs here in Zurich in the Prime Tower office, a uh, very nice place. So if we as developers uh, develop an application today, it's often in the cloud, and if you have a problem at hand, how do we solve it? Which language do we take? Well, uh, there's a couple of languages that we can choose from. So JavaScript is pretty popular those days, Python has gained a lot of traction, if you want to do data science, you might want to use R or Python, right? There's C++ for high performance code. Yeah, lots of us, or probably everybody of us has, has used Java before. And there's Ruby and there's many other languages. So you might want to choose the language that suits your needs best. But it's not only just about the language, right? Because languages come with ecosystems as well. So if you talk about JavaScript, you're don't, not only going to use JavaScript, but you want to use all these open source libraries that are, avail are available there on NPM, for instance. And you're not only interested in the libraries, but also in building tools. So if you talk about JavaScript, you talk about Browserify, or like nowadays more like Webpack, and these things. And then like for the other languages, you have similar tools. You would use pip or pip env, and then like when we talk about Java, you might use Maven or Gradle. Ruby has gained a lot of traction with Rails. So this is all very nice. We build our apps the way we want them to build. We reuse whatever is there out there in the free world and whatever is fun, we use it. Now, if your app has a considerable amount of data, it might be that at some point you want to start using a database. And this could be the Oracle database, could be MySQL database, or any other database. Now, as soon as you do that, you have to talk to the database. And not only that, if you have data-intensive code, you might want to run your code where the data is, and that is in the database. And in theory, this sounds very good, but you might hit the problem that every database comes with its own language. So you end up writing non-portable code. That's why uh, in Oracle Labs, we have a slightly different vision that we pursue, which is to say, you know, we have all these nice languages out there. Why not just use them within the database. And this is exactly what the Oracle Database Multilingual Engine does. Multilingual Engine, or MLE for short, and it's not a product, but uh, there is a better release which you can find if you follow this QR code. The key enabling component of this multilingual engine, as I mentioned already, is GraalVM. Now, let us have a look at how this looks from the developer and how this looks from the user perspective. So you as a developer, you just want to write code. So you write, for instance, JavaScript code, and you write, for instance, a UMD module. Now, if you want to deploy this to the database, if you have JavaScript functions, we all know JavaScript is dynamically typed, you might not know what type your arguments have, right? But if you're execute code in the database, you will apply functions to database columns, for instance, and they have a type, and the type might not match, right? So database columns, they are clearly string-like, like varchar, or they are like numbers, or they are dates. So we need something to annotate our functions that we want to deploy to the database. We need something to annotate the types. Now, luckily, uh, JavaScript found a solution for this, which is called TypeScript. So what you do as a developer, uh, in our case, you write your JavaScript code and your TypeScript uh, declarations, or you just write one TypeScript file. And then I talked about the fact that not only languages are important, but also the ecosystem. So that's why we have a tool for you called DBJS, so Database JavaScript, which then takes the JavaScript module that you just wrote. It uh, bundles everything with Webpack, so you might have... Uh, dependencies, right, bundles all of this and uploads this as a self-contained bundle to the database. Now, in addition, if you want to make this callable from something like SQL, you need a PLSQL function declaration to make it callable, and that's what you see on the left uh, bottom here. So if you assume that the package that we just deployed is validated to say yes, the deployment tool DBJS will create a PLSQL package for you, and this package has all the functions that you exported. For example, it has a function is email, which takes as an input a varchar2 and returns a number, right? Because Boolean is not a SQL type, so we map this to a number. 
Also note the language construct as language, which tells us this is a JavaScript. So it's a PL SQL, uh, PL SQL package, but the implementation is in JavaScript. And it gives us the name of the JavaScript bundle, which is validator.js, and the function within that bundle that we're interested in, plus the TypeScript type that we have uh, on the JavaScript side for this function. Okay, so that's what's deployed in the database, the code in, in, in the catalog, and a PL SQL package to make this callable. So if you have an application or a user that wants to use this and uses uh, a call, um, calls a uh, stored procedure or a user-defined function, um, this can be done using a select statement where you can use now this validator package in the where clause, you can use it in the select clause, in the order by, in the group by, I mean anywhere where you can put uh, user-defined functions. And if it's a stored procedure, stored procedures um, being um, like functions, but having no return value and interacting with data, they, uh, you just call them, and that's the second example. Now, if you do that, um, it's a PL sac SQL package in the beginning, so this will first trigger the normal database PL SQL engine that relates to PL SQL code, but then the PL SQL code will look at this, will realize, okay, it's language JavaScript, so that will trigger the MLE engine, specifically the JavaScript part of it, which is then responsible of retrieving the JavaScript bundle and execute this code using GraalVM. Now, in its uh, current uh, prototype version, MLE also supports Python, which means that we have a very similar workflow. You write your Python package. Again, you have to use type annotations, but luckily, since Python 3.5, I believe, there are type annotations. So again, you annotate your functions with the types that you expect deploy this to the database using another tool called dbpy, and then you can call this again from your application using the Python part of the MLE engine. Now, perhaps this was a lot of theory to you, so let me just show how this looks like in a demo. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I will show you some Python code, Python ELO, which um, takes the existing open source ELO module. So ELO is this uh, chess ranking algorithm, right? And as this ELO package doesn't come with type annotations, we have to write the small wrapper uh, that has type annotations. So we have these three functions that basically call the corresponding ELO function and um, basically tell our tool what uh, types we can expect for inputs and outputs. So let me just deploy this using dbpy, dbpy. And now, so what I give this tool is really just, as I want to deploy, I could also like list uh, available functions. Um, okay, that was just the wrong name because it's just Python ELO. I can also list available functions. I can drop uh, stuff from the database. Now I'm going to deploy it. And I just give a connection string to the database, I give username and password, and that's all I need. Now, at some point, this gets deployed. Um, and I will now execute, uh, yeah, once it's ready, I get this output that looks uh, very similar to NPM, right? That tells you what is the uh, bundle that has been built, it's called Python ELO, what are the three Python functions it has, expectation, potential, quality, and how are they mapped to PL SQL functions? Right, so I can now use these functions, and instead of just using SQL Plus or anything, I use uh, Data Studio, with, which has been presented in the machine learning and graph uh, talk as well. It's just the Oracle Labs uh, notebooks technology. I use this to execute a paragraph, which now selects the name of a chess player and his potential in a chess game against another player with constant rating 2,843. So how many ELO points would this player win if he beats that player with rating 2,843? So uh, just to give you some insights here, 2,843 is a pretty high value, um, as you will see in the result data set. So if you are like uh, only average player, you can gain quite some ELO points if you beat a player like that. So we have it ordered here, um, and 10 is like the maximum you can win in a game. So like the, the medium players with rating around 1,000, 
they will get up to 10 ELO points if they beat that one guy. And just to give you the number who this one guy is, it's Carlson Magnus, he has this uh, ELO, he has this rating, right? And if he would play against himself, he could only win five ELO points because that's the, the minimum that you get. Now, that was uh, using DBPY and Python. I'm also quickly gonna show you DBJS, which is the equivalent for JavaScript. And um, maybe you don't even want to write code, right? Maybe you just wanna use code. So you already used the validator module, I guess, in your browser to check whether somebody entered the correct email address in some specific text field. You might use it in your node application to check email addresses in the middleware. But you might also want to use this in the database if you already have invalid email addresses in there to check out like which are valid, which are not. So all you have to do here is not even write code. You just do, uh, well, a little bit more than that, npm install validator. And then remember that we also need the types, right? Uh, so you also do npm install at types validator. And remember, we didn't write any code. We just said this validator package looks nice. Let's run it in a database. So the final thing I do is dbjs deploy, give it the connection string again, user or password, and just say validator, right? And the deployment tool will now check out your notes module folder, will check out where, where is the validator module, where are the types to that validator module, will do the entire type analysis. It will also see some types that the database cannot understand. For those, it will just not deploy the functions, it will just create warnings, and it will create uh, PL SQL functions for those functions that do actually work. So here you see all the warnings, quite a few. And now if we go up here, we should also see the functions that have been deployed. And you can also see like some functions like this is length, they have optional parameters. So we can solve this in PL SQL with overloaded functions with a variable number of arguments. So some of these uh, JavaScript functions are mapped to more than one PL SQL function. And at some point we should also see the is email function here. Yes, here we go. So we can now use this to uh, run a query that um, gives me all the email addresses in the database ordered by validity, right? And that means like we get the invalid email addresses first. Yes, here we go, we were lucky. So we see that indeed these three entries here, these are invalid email addresses because they don't have an at, but we all know that the validator package checks more than that, right? But this is obviously wrong email addresses and these are obviously correct ones. So this function did just what we expected. And now if we talk about stored procedures, you might want to interact with SQL as well. So let me show you how you would uh, do that. Um, that's the wrong one. It's uh, here. So we have uh, a SQL driver as well. It's called DBJS SQL. So it's a, an MLE internal module that allows you to execute uh, SQL statements like you see here, you can insert stuff, you can update stuff. And we made sure that the interface of this module, right, this execute, looks exactly like Node Oracle DB. But we also, this code, for instance, could also be executed with MySQL 2. It has the same interface, so we could also execute this uh, on MySQL MLE, which was just presented in a previous quickie uh, last session by Voin. So it's not. It's, it's also about like having backends for, for different databases, right? To make the code really portable. So I can also deploy this one and then I can run this uh, function to insert Larry with salary 42, um, only if Larry does not exist yet. And then um, if we are lucky, this works. We have like some round trips to the US and back here. <coughs> and having Data Studio running locally on my laptop, which is not really the setting in which it usually operates. But at some point, um, I should get uh, a message telling me that Larry has been inserted. Yep, uh, I was fine. And now I can just uh, do a select uh, on the employees table again, and I should hopefully see that Larry now shows up in a data set. So if I go to the final page, I guess I'm gonna see Larry here. Yes, and by the way, uh, Data Studio also has nice visualizations. So if I want to um, display this chess player potential ELO points that I could win, I can also uh, display this uh, like more colorful, right? You see that like the medium-sized players, they get 10 points and then this goes down, down to five here. So 
Given all of that, you might actually now wonder how does this all work? And this is what Julia is going to tell you about. Thank you, Lucas. So I'm going to talk about the underlying technology GraalVM. So GraalVM is the technology that enables running um, JavaScript and Python in the database, which, which we just saw. So what is GraalVM? GraalVM is, um, the vision is that it is a universal virtual machine. It's a high performance polyglot virtual machine. What does it, what do, what does it mean? So it has, um, there are three parts. First of all, it can run any JVM based language, for example, Java, Scala, Kotlin, Clojure. Um, and it has, a sh um, it has a shared runtime. So you can run any language with this virtual machine. Then it also um, can run the dynamic languages, such as JavaScript, Ruby, or R, so or Python. So we just saw um, JavaScript and Python. Um, so we provide an um, implementation language, implementation API, where you can also run dynamic languages. And then we can even run LLVM-based languages, such as C and C++. So one shared runtime for various programming languages. So it, it reduces or it gets rid of the isolation between programming languages. And it also introduces um, interoperability between all these languages. So you can use GraalVM either standalone or in the context of MySQL, Node.js, or OpenJDK, or as we just saw um, with the in the Oracle database. So I want to talk about a three, a very high level, about three things that you can do with GraalVM. The first one is gonna, I'm gonna talk a bit about performance for JVM-based um, applications, running JVM-based applications with GraalVM. Secondly, I'd like to talk a bit about a native image generation. And thirdly, I would, um, I'm gonna show an example application where you can run polyglot applications in, in one, so write one application with different languages. So let's start with uh, Java JVM based languages performance. <coughs> so I'm going to talk about it very high level. At the end, I'm going to show some resources and please follow up and also ask questions. <coughs> so what, is, uh, what are we doing? So at runtime, we translate Java bytecode into machine code. We have a modern design, um, especially for new concepts like stream um, APIs. We have performance improvements. It's maintainable, extensible. It uh, focuses on high performance. It's fully Java compliant and it supports ahead of time compilation. GraalVM enables native images. So what is a native image? We compile, it compiles your program ahead of time into a native executable. If you look at the code example here, so you can um, com compile your class and interface definitions with Java C into um, bytecode uh, Java uh, class files. Um, so the command here is Java C and then you have an example Java application and you, we measure the time, which in this case takes um, uh, 0 0.07 seconds. Or you can use GraalVM to generate a native image and um, I ahead of time, so a native um, um, executable, and then execute that. And it, the two things that you gain is first, it improves the startup time, and secondly, it reduces memory footprint. So what we do, we don't use the um, hotspot VM. We have a substrate VM which takes care of the garbage collection, um, threat scheduling, and uh, things like that. So the second one is a native image generation. And then uh, the third thing I'd like to talk about is that GraalVM enables polyglot applications. So what you can see in this example, that um, you can write one application in different programming languages. So for example, you can have a JavaScript, our Express app, where you have um, write your Express app that listens on a port, and then you have a GET request. And you also want to use other languages, for example, here, Java and R. So you want to, for example, for your business logic, you would like to still use Java, and for some plots, you still would like to use R. So you could write something, uh, in this example, we use, uh, because Java has a better big inter integer implementation, you can see that we use um, java.type and then the big integer type in our Express app. And um, then we also see that we use our Polyglot Java API when you see, um, so polyglot.evaluation, we say that we want to um, run R code. And then we can also, for example, plot R plots in our Express application. So the, um, the image that you see on the right is showing that you um, 
uh, run your Express app, you can see your Java integer, uh, big integer number, and you can see an R plot all in one browser with a polyglot application based on GraalVM. So what did we talk about? So first we talked about the Oracle uh, database multilingual engine, where we want to execute JavaScript and Python as an example in the Oracle database. Uh, we have convenient deployment that uh, Lucas showed using DBGS and DBPY, and all of this is powered by GraalVM. And GraalVM, the vision is to have a universal virtual machine to run any program anywhere. We talked about um, performance about uh, for JVM or Java, um, JVM-based applications such as Java, um, but also performance in general, and then native image generation and polyglot ap applications. So to conclude this talk, I'd like to share some resources. So first of all, we have the website graalvm.org. Then we also on GitHub, and we, ha we, ha we are on Twitter. Please follow us, and we also have um, always have blogs on Medium. I th uh, yeah, we also just released RC14 yesterday, so you can check it out on our website. And there's also a link about the Oracle Database Multilingual Engine. Thanks for your attention.